You wake up with stiff joints, your back aches, your knees hurt going upstairs, and your doctor says, that's just part of getting older. But here's what they might not tell you. Chronic pain isn't something you just have to live with. Your body is sending you a message, and that message is inflammation. Now, I'm not going to promise you'll be pain-free in five days, but what if certain foods you might already have in your kitchen could actually change how your genes behave? What if they could tell your inflammatory genes to switch off? Stay with me, because by the end of this video, you'll understand something most people never learn. Your fork is more powerful than you think. I've spent years studying the science of nutrition and inflammation, and I'm not the only one fascinated by this. Researchers at major institutions have confirmed something remarkable. What you eat directly changes how your genes express themselves. This isn't alternative medicine. This is epigenetics. Here's the science. According to multiple studies published in the British Journal of Nutrition, people who ate anti-inflammatory diets showed measurable drops in C-reactive protein, the marker doctors use to predict heart disease and arthritis risk. A 2023 meta-analysis found that each unit increase in dietary inflammatory index raised the odds of elevated inflammation markers by 10%. Inflammation isn't just about pain. The World Health Organization identifies chronic inflammation as a root cause of heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, and autoimmune conditions. But here's the good news. Your body is designed to heal. Research from multiple universities has shown that specific foods contain natural compounds that literally turn off inflammatory genes at the molecular level. They block pathways like NF-kappa-BG, the master switch that controls inflammation. This isn't theory. These are peer-reviewed studies from institutions publishing in journals like Nature, Scientific Reports, and the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Let me ask you something. Are you over 40? Do you sit at a desk most of the day? Have you noticed your joints feel stiffer in the morning than they used to? Or maybe you're dealing with unexplained fatigue brain fog, or digestive issues that doctors can't quite figure out. If any of that sounds familiar, this video is for you. Because chronic inflammation doesn't just cause joint pain. It's the hidden driver behind most chronic diseases. Think of it like this. Inflammation is like a fire alarm in your body. When you cut your finger, inflammation rushes in, heals the wound, and then turns off. That's good inflammation. But when you eat processed foods, sugar, and refined oils every day, that alarm never stops ringing. Your immune system stays on high alert 24-7. Over time, this constant state of alarm damages your tissues. Your joints wear down, your arteries get stiff, your brain cells age faster than they should. That's chronic inflammation. But here's where it gets interesting. Certain foods send a different signal. They tell those inflammatory genes to switch off, not by covering up symptoms, but by changing how your body behaves at a genetic level. Let me explain how this works simply. Your genes are like light switches. Some control inflammation. When those switches are on, your body produces chemicals called cytokines. These are alarm bells that tell your immune system Send help. When you cut yourself, that's useful. But when those switches stay on all day, every day, that's chronic inflammation. Now, here's what research has found. Certain foods keep those switches on. Refined vegetable oils are problem number one. Soybean oil, canola oil, corn oil. They're in almost every packaged food. Crackers, dressings, frozen meals, restaurant food. These oils are loaded with omega-6 fatty acids. You need some omega-6, but the average person today eats 20 times more omega-6 than omega-3. According to research published by the American Heart Association, this imbalance triggers inflammation at the cellular level. Added sugar and high fructose corn syrup are next. Sugar activates something called the NF-kappa-B pathway, a master switch for inflammation. Research in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found that people who consumed more than 40 grams of added sugar daily had double the inflammatory markers compared to those eating less than 10 grams. That's just one can of soda. Refined grains, white bread, white rice, 
pasta spike your blood sugar, which triggers insulin, which then triggers inflammation. Processed meats contain advanced glycation end products, or AGEs. These form when meat is cooked at high heat. Studies show AGEs directly activate inflammatory genes. And finally, trans fats, even though they're banned in some countries, they're still hiding in margarine, microwave popcorn, and packaged baked goods. So those are the foods keeping you inflamed. But now let me show you the opposite, foods that turn inflammation off. All right, here are the top four anti-inflammatory foods you should start eating, beginning with number one fatty fish. These fish contain omega-3 fatty acids, specifically EPA and DHA. These aren't just healthy fats, they're signaling molecules. According to research published in British Journal of Clinical Pharmacology and studies from Harvard Medical School, EPA and DHA get into your cell membranes and produce compounds called resolvins and protectins, which actively shut down inflammation pathways. Here's what the research shows. Omega-3s reduce TNF-alpha, interleukin-6, and C-reactive protein, three of the most damaging inflammatory markers. A meta-analysis of heart failure patients found that omega-3 supplementation significantly suppressed both TNF-alpha and IL-6 levels. A large trial called VITAL which followed more than 25,000 adults for five years, found that omega-3 supplements reduced inflammation markers in people who rarely ate fish. The same study showed omega-3s were associated with a 40% reduction in heart attacks among those consuming the least fish. Think of omega-3s like peacekeepers in your body. They don't just fight inflammation, they help resolve it naturally. Research published in Molecular Nutrition and Food Research explains that EPA and DHA inhibit NF-kappa-B, that master inflammation switch, and activate anti-inflammatory pathways. If you don't eat fish, consider a high-quality fish oil supplement. The research suggests about two to three servings of fatty fish per week provide meaningful anti-inflammatory benefits. Next, food number two, extra virgin olive oil not the cheap stuff from the grocery store. Real, cold-pressed, extra virgin olive oil. It contains a compound called oleocanthal. And here's what makes this remarkable. Oleocanthal works almost exactly like ibuprofen. Scientists at the Monell Chemical Census Center and University of Pennsylvania made a groundbreaking discovery, published in the journal Nature in 2005. Dave found that oleocanthal inhibits the same COX-1 and COX-2 enzymes that NSAIDs like ibuprofen target, but without the side effects. In fact, studies show that 50 grams of extra virgin olive oil, about three and a half tablespoons, contains enough oleocanthal to provide roughly 10% of the anti-inflammatory effect of a standard ibuprofen dose. But oleocanthal does something even more interesting. Research published in PMC shows it reduces expression of inflammatory markers, including IL-1, TNF-alpha, and IL-6 in both cartilage cells and immune cells. This is why it shows promise for degenerative joint diseases. A separate study found that regular consumption of extra virgin olive oil is associated with lower rates of chronic inflammatory diseases throughout the Mediterranean region. Here's the key. Use cold-pressed extra virgin olive oil. Drizzle it on salads and cooked vegetables. Don't cook with it at high heat. That destroys the beneficial compounds. The research is clear. Daily consumption of quality extra virgin olive oil can reduce systemic inflammation over time. Next, food number three, berries. Berries are packed with anthocyanins, natural pigments that give them their deep colors. But anthocyanins do far more than provide color. According to research published in Scientific Reports and PMC, anthocyanins block the COX-2 enzyme, the same enzyme that NSAIDs like aspirin target. Except berries do it naturally. Multiple studies confirm their anti-inflammatory effects. 
A study on raspberry anthocyanins showed they reduced expression of COX-2, INOS, IL-1 beta, and IL-6 in activated immune cells. Another study found that anthocyanins from cherries and raspberries inhibited 45% of COX-1 activity and 47% of COX-2 activity at tested concentrations comparable to ibuprofen and naproxen. Research published in Antioxidants Journal found that anthocyanin-enriched fractions from berries reduced inflammatory markers including IL-1 beta and IL-6 and suppressed the expression of COX-2. A review in PMC examining vascular health found that anthocyanins inhibit both COX-1 and COX-2 enzymes while exerting favorable effects on oxidative stress and endothelial function. The beauty of berries is their versatility. Frozen berries work just as well as fresh. The anthocyanins are preserved through freezing. Add them to smoothies, oatmeal, or Greek yogurt. Even a cup of mixed berries daily provides significant anti-inflammatory compounds. The research consistently shows regular berry consumption reduces markers of systemic inflammation and may slow the progression of chronic inflammatory diseases. Next, food hashtag four, turmeric. Turmeric contains curcumin, one of the most extensively studied anti-inflammatory compounds on earth. Multiple clinical trials confirm its effects. According to research published in the Journal of Medicinal Food and reviewed by the Arthritis Foundation, curcumin significantly reduces pain and inflammation in people with arthritis, with effects comparable to NSAIDs, but without the side effects. Here's how it works. Curcumin blocks NF-kappa B, the master inflammation switch. A comprehensive review published in BMC Complementary Medicine explains that curcumin inhibits this key transcription factor, explaining its anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive activity. Multiple randomized controlled trials compared curcumin with NSAIDs like ibuprofen and diclofenic for arthritis. Studies published in Drug Design, Development, and Therapy showed that doses of 250 to 500 milligrams of curcumin twice daily significantly outperformed placebo on all measures of arthritis symptoms. But here's the critical detail. Your body doesn't absorb curcumin well on its own. This is where black pepper comes in. Black pepper contains piperine, which increases curcumin absorption by up to 2,000%, according to research published in Drug Metabolism and Toxicology. This isn't a small difference, it's transformative. Studies also show that combining curcumin with piperine enhances its anti-inflammatory effects for conditions including arthritis and inflammatory bowel disease. Add turmeric to soups, smoothies, or scrambled eggs, always with a pinch of black pepper, or take it as a supplement that includes piperine or black pepper extract. Next, practical implementation. You don't need to overhaul your entire diet tomorrow. Just start with these three changes. This week, swap your cooking oil, replace vegetable oil and canola oil with extra virgin olive oil. Use it for salad dressings and drizzling over finished dishes. Use avocado oil if you need high heat cooking. Add fatty fish twice a week, salmon, sardines, or mackerel. Even canned fish works. If you don't eat fish, consider a quality omega-3 supplement with at least one to two grams combined EPA and DHA. Eat berries every day, a handful of blueberries, strawberries, or mixed berries. Frozen works perfectly. Add them to breakfast or snacks. Add turmeric with black pepper to your meals or take it as a supplement. That's it, four simple additions. If you do them consistently, Research suggests you'll start noticing improvements in how you feel within two to four weeks. Your energy may improve, joint stiffness may ease, brain fog may lift. These aren't promises, they're patterns seen in clinical studies with real people making these exact dietary changes. Let me be clear, food doesn't replace medicine. If you have a serious medical condition, work with your doctor. But understand this, Inflammation is upstream of nearly every chronic disease, and the most powerful tool you have to control it isn't a pill, it's your plate. The research from Harvard, 
the Mayo Clinic, studies published in Nature, British Journal of Nutrition, scientific reports, and dozens of peer-reviewed journals, it all points to the same conclusion. What you eat sends direct messages to your genes. Every meal is either saying, stay inflamed or heal and repair. You get to choose which message you send. If this video opened your eyes, hit that like button. Drop a comment and tell me, which of these four foods are you adding to your diet this week? And if you know someone dealing with chronic pain who doesn't know where to turn, share this video with them. You might just change their life. Subscribe if you want more science-backed health information with no hype, no gimmicks, just truth. Your body is talking to you. It's time to listen. I'll see you in the next video.